Assalam o Alaikum. Waalaikum Assalam. Come on, son. Let's go take a walk outside. That sounds great. Wait for a second, Baba. I'm coming. It's a beautiful day, isn't it? Yes, Baba. It is. What is the book that you are carrying with you? Oh, I have my favorite parts of all the prophet stories written in it. My friends love these stories at school. Mashallah, that's wonderful. You are such a good son. Thanks, Baba. So, do you remember the story that I told you yesterday? Of course, Baba. I remember the prophet's encounter with an angel and the way it changed his life. Inshallah, I will tell you the remaining story of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Now listen carefully. Bismillah. The story of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. In the last episode, we saw how the Prophet had converted the people close to him into Islam. For three long years, the Prophet laboured quietly to deliver the message of God. Idol worship was deeply rooted among the people and the Prophet tried to convince as much as he could. After three years of struggle, he was only able to secure 30 followers. Even his companions had now started questioning his sanity. By now, his enemies had started plotting against the Prophet. The Prophet preached that everyone were equal in front of God, and this challenged the authority of local priests. One day, they gathered together and decided to suppress the movement of Prophet. They decided that each family should take upon themselves the task of stamping out the followers of Islam. Each household started torturing its own members, relatives and slaves who were following the Prophet. The people were beaten, flogged and then thrown into the prison. The hill of Ramada and the place called Bata had now become scenes of cruel torture. Only the Prophet was left out because he had the protection of Abu Talib and Abu Bakr. Then the priests tried to tempt the Prophet into joining their religion. For this, they sent Utba ibn Rabia to meet the Prophet. O son of my brother, said the messenger, you are distinguished by your qualities. Yet, you have denounced our gods. I am here to make a proposition to you. I am listening to you, O son of Walid, said the Prophet. If you are willing to acquire riches, honours, dignity, then we are willing to offer you a fortune larger than what we have among ourselves. We shall make you our chief and we will consult everything with you. If you desire dominion, then we shall make you our king, said Utba. When Utba had finished, the Prophet said, Now listen to me, O father of Walid. I'm listening, replied Utba. The Prophet recited the first 13 verses of Surah Fusilat. He praised Allah, Subhanahu wa ta'ala, and explained about the glad tidings of paradise to anyone who believed in the one true God. The Prophet then reminded him about what had happened to the people of Ad and Thamud. When the Prophet had finished his recitation, he said to Utbah, This is my reply to your proposition. Now take what course you find best. When their plan to tempt the Prophet failed, they approached his uncle, Abu Talib. The Prophet's uncle tried persuading the Prophet to stop preaching to the people. But the Prophet said, O oh, uncle, if they were to put the sun in my right hand and the moon in my left hand to stop me from preaching Islam, I would never stop. The Prophet, overcome by the thought that his uncle was willing to desert him, turned to depart from his home. But Abu Talib called out to the Prophet loudly. He asked him to come back. When the Prophet came back, Abu Talib told him, Say whatever you please, by the Lord, I shall not desert you forever. The priests from different tribes started publicly prosecuting the supporters of the Prophet. 
It was during this time that a Christian king named Al Najashi was ruling Abyssinia. The prophet had heard about the righteousness, tolerance, and hospitality of this kind ruler. When the persecution became unbearable for the people, the prophet advised them to emigrate to Abyssinia. Some 15 families emigrated to this country in small groups to avoid detection. This is called the first Hijra in the history of Islam. This happened during the fifth year of the Prophet's mission. The emigrants received a kind reception from the king and his people. They were soon followed by many others who suffered at the hands of the evil priests in Makkah. The number of people who emigrated soon reached around 100. When the priests heard about this, they were furious. They decided not to leave the emigrants in peace. They immediately sent two envoys to the king for bringing back all of them. When the envoys met the king, he summoned the poor fugitives and asked them what they had to say. Jafar, the son of Abu Talib and brother of Ali, then spoke for the exiles. O king! We were plunged in the depth of barbarism, we adored idols, we disregarded everything and we had no law. Then Allah raised a man among us who was pure and honest. He taught us to worship Allah and forbade us from worshipping the idols. He taught us to speak the truth and to be faithful. We believe in him and we have accepted his teachings. His followers were persecuted, forcing us back into worship the idols again. When we found no safety in among them, we came to your kingdom, trusting us to save us from them. When the king heard his speech, he asked the envoy to return to their land and not to interfere with the emigrants. While his followers sought refuge in foreign lands, the Prophet continued his preaching against strict opposition. Some of them mocked at him and they asked for a sign. Then the Prophet would say, Allah has not sent me to work wonders. He has sent me to preach to you. But the priests persisted, didn't agree with him. They insisted that unless they saw sign, they would not believe in his Lord. The disbelievers used to ask, why is he not showing any miracles like the previous prophets? Because miracles had proved inadequate to convince, answered the prophet. Noah was sent with signs. Then what happened? Where was the lost tribe of Tamud? They refused to believe in Prophet Sali unless they showed a sign. Then the prophet caused the rocks to break and brought forth a living camel. He did what they asked for. Then what happened? In anger, the people cut the camel's feet and again dared the Prophet to fulfill his threat of judgment. Eventually, they all lay dead in their beds the next morning. There are some 17 places in Quran in which the Prophet has challenged to show a sign. He gave all of them the same answer. After some time, the priests approached Abu Talib again and asked him to abandon his nephew. But the honourable man declared his intention to protect the Prophet against any harm. MashaAllah, that was such an amazing story. I'm glad you liked it, Amir. What happened to the Prophet? Did the priests harm him? <laughs> I will tell you about that tomorrow, Amir. I'm so excited, Baba. I'm sure you are. So are you ready for the questions? Yes, Baba, I am. All right. Now tell me, how many followers did the Prophet gain after three years of preaching? Hmm, the Prophet gained only about 30 followers. That's correct, Amir. How did the priests of other tribe try to tempt the Prophet? They first offered to give Prophet loads of wealth. When the Prophet refused, they then offered to appoint him as their leader. And what did the Prophet do? The Prophet then recited first 13 verses of Surah. MashaAllah, that was the right answer, Amir. What did they do next? They then approached Abu Talib, the Prophet's uncle, and asked him to stop his nephew. And what did Abu Talib do? 
He approached the Prophet and requested him to stop the preaching, but the Prophet refused his uncle as well. That's wonderful. Can you tell me what happened next? The disbelievers then started persecuting the supporters of Prophet. That's correct again. Now tell me the name of the Christian king who ruled Abyssinia. Hmm, his name was Al Najashi and he was a wise ruler. Mashallah, that was correct again. That's all for today, son. I will tell you the remaining story tomorrow. Come, let's go back home. Yes, Baba.